Hi, welcome to this uh, Fireware Academy course. Uh, the scope of uh, Fireware Security Chapter and uh, specifically regarding the PEP proxy generic enabler. This is the third uh, lesson of this uh, course. Uh, in the previous uh, lesson, I uh, explained you how to install and configure the PEP uh, component in your own machine. And in this, uh, in this lesson, uh, I'm going to show you uh, how it works uh, configured in the three, in the three uh, available levels of, uh, of security. Okay? In order to refresh uh, you the main concepts of uh, these three levels of uh, security, um, the, the first one is the, uh, is the one in which I configure in the, the, Vilma, the Vilma component in order to check only authentic authentication, in order to check only if a user is correctly authenticated in the environment. In the second one, uh, I will also check um, if the user has the needed rights to access the specific resource that, uh, that he is trying to, to access and I will check the permissions uh, in uh, form of uh, HTTP bare fan uh, path. Okay, and the third one, the more advanced uh, mechanisms, uh, the idea is the same that in the second one, but in this case the permissions are set uh, in form of uh, X uh, ACML policies. As uh, before, uh, in order to show you how, uh, how, the, how the component works, I'm going to use the Fireware Lab uh, running instance uh, of uh, um, all the components that uh, take part in this configuration that are the Keyrock uh, Generic Enabler and the uh, Auxita Force Generic Enabler. Okay? The first uh, level works uh, this way. Uh, when a user sends a request to your backend uh, service, um, he has to include in the HTTP header um, the token that uh, he has created using uh, mechanisms that I explained in the, in the Keyrock uh, in the Keyrock course. The creation of these tokens is, is not in the scope of this of this course. So please, in order to understand uh, how to create your own tokens, you have to refer to the specific Keyrock course. Okay. Once I have created uh, this uh, token, this OAuth two token, I have to include uh, it in every request that I send to the backend service to my backend service. Vilma Generic Enabler will intercept all the requests, will uh, extract the token from the header, and will check with Keyrock Generic Enabler if the token is uh, valid, if the token corresponds to an uh, authenticated user in the platform. If the validation uh, succeeds, uh, Keyrock Generic Enabler will return uh, a 200 uh, response uh, to 200 uh, HTTP response to Vilma and uh, he uh, also includes some information about the uh, authenticated user. If not, if the validation does not success, uh, he will uh, reject uh, the, the response. Okay. So Vilma will receive this uh, user information and will redirect uh, the request to the backend service if everything works uh, as expected. In the second configuration, the, the mechanism uh, in the beginning is, is the same. Vilma intercepts the, the, the token from the HTTP header and validates it with the Keyrock Generic Enabler, but in this case, this is not enough to redirect the, the request to the backend service because Vilma has uh, also to check if the user has the needed uh, permissions, the needed roles to access the, uh, the, the REST resource that he's trying to, to access. In order to do so, he will extract from here, from this uh, user information that Kirok is, uh, is um, is sending to, to Vilma in order to extract the roles that the user has assigned and uh, taking into account the verb 
and the path that the, the user is, is trying to access, he will check in this case with Auth Theta Force Generic Enabler if uh, the uh, permissions that the user um, has are the needed to access that resource. Okay? Take into account uh, that uh, these uh, roles uh, are defined in the scope of an application. So, uh, as the token is created in the scope of that application, this uh, validation will be only in the scope of the um, of the application that has created this token. I will I will show you later how to manage these uh, roles uh, inside applications. The last case, the, the more advanced case, is the one in which uh, Vilma is checking this uh, authorization without Zeta Force using XACML policies instead of the HTTP verb and path that he check, checks in the previous case. Take into account that, uh, for instance, a use case uh, in which uh, you will need uh, this uh, validation is one in which uh, you need not only to check the HTTP verb and the resource, but for instance the content of the body of the request or uh, to check uh, custom headers that you include in your, in your request. So this is a custom case that depends uh, on each component. Uh, so to make this validation you have to include your uh, custom extensions in this component. So in this demo I am going to show you only the first and the second um, cases. Okay, this is a custom uh, case that uh, depends of depends on its uh, uh, backend service. So, okay, how to send the request to P proxy to PEP proxy to Vilma? You have to include uh, only in the request this header, this HTTP header, including the the token. Okay, in the demo I will use uh, curl commands uh, in my terminal in order to uh, do it in an easy way. Finally, if you want to configure the Bilma using the third level, uh, you will need to check this documentation regarding the XACML um, protocol and also regarding the specific generic enabler, the Ausita Force uh, generic enabler, in order to understand how it works. Okay? But this is in the scope of that uh, generic enabler. Okay, so let's go to the, uh, to the demo. Uh, you remember from the previous uh, from the previous lesson. Here I have uh, the um, the Bilma component already inst installed and configured, and also registered in Keyrock um, in Keyrock uh, Generic Enabler in the Fiware account in the Fiware Lab account portal. By default, this component is configured to use the first level of security. The, the only authentication level of security. So I have just to start uh, the, the component, sorry, and uh, I have it configured to access Google as backend service. So if I send a request from this other terminal to uh, localhost, that is the host in which I have this uh, development uh, Bilma component uh, listening. Um, I will retrieve the uh, Google index page um, as a result. Okay, but as I have put the PEP proxy intercepting all the requests to Google in this case, if I send only um, um, a request directly to to localhost, that is the, the way with, where I have, sorry, where I have the component running. He said me that, okay, the uh, oath uh, token um, header is not uh, present in the request, okay. Here you can see the log from the Vilma proxy, which uh, he said the same, the same thing, okay. If I include uh, the header with a, with a random uh, token, for instance, x out token, blah, blah, blah. He sent me that 
uh, of course, obviously, this uh, token is not authorized to uh, access the backend service, okay? And the same thing in the PEP uh, log. But finally, if I include the valid token in the request that I have uh, already created, that at, at, at I said before, as, as I said before, the creation of uh, OAuth two tokens is not in the scope of this lesson. You have to check with uh, in the Fireware uh, Keyrock uh, courses. I have uh, here one token uh, already created. If I include it in the in the header, in this case. Uh, PEP proxy said that yes, the access token is okay, and he uh, redirects me to the application. In this case, is the main page of uh, Google. That is this uh, so beautiful HTML uh, page. Okay, so okay, we have success with the with the first configuration, and now I'm going to configure the Vilma proxy in the second. Uh, in the second uh, way. In order to do so, as you probably remember from the previous lesson, I have here in the configuration file a, a specific parameter that enable or not the uh, communication with the uh, Auseta force. As you can see here, I'm uh, in this demo, I'm uh, also using the um, running instance in the Firewall Lab environment. Okay, so uh, putting here true. I can restart the, the server, okay? And in this case, if I send a request, for instance, to access resource two, he, he will send, he will uh, say me that, okay, this user that has uh, these uh, roles, this one and this one, uh, is not authorized, okay? To, to access the to access the specific resource, okay. As you can see here, the communication is done uh, with the uh, Auseta Force uh, component, okay. So I have to assign to this specific user that is represented by the token that I'm using um, a role that allows him to send a GET request to resource resource two to REST resource two. How to do so? Okay, so to do so, we have to do uh, some configuration in a Fireware Lab uh, IDM portal. Uh, this is the application in which I have uh, registered this PEP proxy, and here I can uh, manage uh, the roles of the of this application. I'm going to create uh, a new a new role here that is the the test. Uh, demo role, okay, uh, and now I have to define inside this uh, new role the specific permissions to access this resource. So this is a test permission, uh, the description is the test, and this is the important part, okay, the HTTP verb that is get and the resource that is resource two. Resource two, yes, it's okay. I have to save this new permission and I have to assign the permission to the role that I've just created, okay? If I click uh, here on save, it's here, uh, uh, the, the permission is correctly assigned to the role, but that not, that's not all because now I have to assign the role that I just created to the user that is creating the tokens. That in this case is this user. Okay, so here clicking an authorize button, I can authorize this, this user inside the application. Um, the user is already. Uh, authorized, but here I have to assign this role that I've just created, uh, test demo role. Okay, I assign it and I save the and I update the changes. Okay, so now this user has the needed role to access uh, this resource to using a get HTTP verb. Let's try. 
I uh, come here, I return to, to, the, to the terminal and now if I send the same request, uh, okay, I have to restart uh, the component, sorry, and uh, if I send uh, the request, he said that everything is working as expected, okay. Uh, yes, in this case I'm trying to access uh, google.com uh, resource 2 that obviously uh, does not exist but he's returning me the response from Google saying that uh, that, uh, that resource does not exist in Google but the, uh, the request is, uh, is redirected, okay. As you can see here uh, he has said that yes the uh, user is authorized to access that resource. Okay, so um, this is the, the second the second mechanism. And regarding the third one, as I say as I said you before, I'm not going to to show you uh, how it works, but only because you have to modify this uh, Bilma uh, component, but only to show how to proceed here you uh, would have to create a new permission but in this case using these options that allows you to introduce here an advanced XACML rule okay but uh, this is an advanced topic that uh, uh, is not in the scope of this uh, specific lesson okay uh, well that's uh, all in this uh, third lesson so uh, many thanks and uh, see you in the next one. Bye.